All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So I obviously want to find the value of x for this problem. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 77 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n, right? And a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. They're both the same thing, it doesn't matter the order. So now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. And because all of these equal each other, this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So over here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77. And we can think of x to the power of 77 as m and 77 as n. So now, remember this is the same thing as I can switch these two places. So now I have x to the power of 77 to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 77 equal to the variable y. So now if I substitute in y for x to the power of 77, I get y to the power of y is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y to the power of y equals 77 to the power of 77. This means that y equals 77. And remember how we let x to the power of 77 equal y. So now I have x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So to solve this, I'm going to take the power of 1 over 77 on both sides. So I have x to the power of 77 to the power of 1 over 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 1 over 77. So I get x is equal to the 77th root of 77. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. So to solve this, I'm going to start by taking the power of 5 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, that's the same thing as a to the power of n times m. We can switch the places of these two. Now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m, this must equal a to the power of n to the power of m. And because all of these are equal to each other, this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So over here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. And we can think of x to the power of 5 as m and 5 as n. So if I switch those two places, I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now 100, I'm going to rewrite that as 10 squared. So now I have x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 squared to the power of 5. And this is the same thing as x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 to the power of 10. Now if I have something in form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So x to the power of 5 is equal to 10, meaning x is equal to the fifth root of 10.
Alright, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of x plus y minus 2 to the power of x is equal to 120. So obviously, I want to find the values of both x, sorry, both x and y for this. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by using the property of exponents that states that a to the power of m plus n this is the same thing as a to the power of m times a to the power of n. Meaning, 2 to the power of x plus y, I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of y, and I have this minus 2 to the power of x is equal to 120. Now, I'm going to go ahead and factor out 2 to the power of x from this equation, from my left-hand side. So now I have 2 to the power of x times, now 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of y divided by 2 to the power of x, simply just 2 to the power of y, and negative 2 to the power of x divided by 2 to the power of x is negative 1. So this is equal to 120. Now, 120, this is the same thing as... eight times 15. And notice how two to the power of x, this is gonna result in an even number because two to the power of any number is gonna be even. And two to the power of y minus one, well an even number minus one is gonna be an odd number. Two to the power of y is gonna be an even number and an even number minus one is odd number. So this is even, this is odd. And notice how eight, this is even, and 15, this is odd. So I have an even number times an odd number is equal to an even number times an odd number. So this means that both the even numbers are equal to each other. So 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. And both the odd numbers are equal to each other. So 2 to the power of y minus 1 is equal to 15. So let's first start by solving 2 to the power of x equals 8. So 8, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And this means that x is equal to 3. Now for 2 to the power of y minus 1, I can add 1 on both sides. So I get 2 to the power of y equals 16. 16 is 2 to the power of 4. So I have 2 to the power of y is equal to 2 to the power of 4. So this means that y equals 4. So my value of x is 3 and my value of y is 4.